personal Lord. The 30th of May, 2015. I've relocated my house plants to a permanent position and some nouveau stuff with these boards down there supporting them, nothing else. And see, the sun travels because of the skylight. And the sun will travel and it will bathe them. And look at this baby flourishing because of that new position. Right. So I got a lot of work to do, man. Whew. I've been in a state of flux. I got to do a lot of paperwork, and now that it's a year out of homelessness, now I've got to plot the course for the next year so that a year from now I can come back with some accomplishments. What have we accomplished? We're not in homelessness, but I'm still suffering from trauma. I don't even get in the bed to sleep. I'm not that comfortable yet. But things are looking quite comfy. And I want to settle in. I've prepared this. Prepared my little nest. <laughs> and I got to get back to airing my shows on TV again. And I'm all alone, man. I'm all alone doing this. So, it's a golf match. It's a chess game. It's a lot of work. So I can make this home. See, that's why I'm not that comfortable. I, haven't, I don't feel like it's home yet. But we're getting there. That's why I was going through all this. Jennifer looks like that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know how that mannequin got like that? It used to be a real woman. We played strip pool. She lost. The man she took off clothes off, bang, she was immortalized into a mannequin, bang, that's what you call magic, yeah baby, ah. so let's get started, I've cleaned up a little bit, <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a little trip outside and see what my hobby that I'm attending to before I get to the 2.3 million bucks plus treble damages where I will ask for $6.9 million and FBI referral for lawyers to lose their uh, licenses, all kinds of stuff. But let's talk about the happy stuff. See that? Made me a little stepping thing right here. Then we go outside. You can see I just got my towel on. <sighs> my neighbor gave me that one. And I actually found this in the garbage outside. And I'm going to restore it. And that's because I've been inspired by a young man called Mr. Dominic. With TDS Woodcraft. In Staten Island, New York, and Port Richmond, somewhere out there. I go down there, and he helps me out, man. Gives me advice, cut a little wood, and that kind of stuff. And I owe him a lot of tomatoes because he's real Italian. He's like second-generation Italian. His dad's from, like, the old country. Good morals. I mean, stand-up guy, man. And I'm proud to know such a young man. I know America isn't lost 
<laughs> completely. So, and I'm sure he's not the only good guy running around, but he's the guy I know that's been nice to me. That cuts the wood down there, everything looks so nice and neat. That's because of Mr. Dominic with TDS Woodcraft in Staten Island, New York. You know, I even went and got these little chips right here. But in any event, we've so far did the garden that's looking good. So it's going to be some maintenance necessary. All right, good maintenance, like make sure everything grows, all these wild flowers. And the vegetables. And my best friend, Miss Tracy, wants the peppers. She loves peppers. She's a vegetarian, so she gets the peppers and all kinds of vegetables here. So now that we've done the gardening as a project, now to, and that's the Garden of Eden, now it's time to get to, time to get to the right there. I'm sanding this down, and I'll put a coat uh, on it, uh, what is it called, primer. I'm going to prime the wood, I'm going to use a nice bright red oil-based paint on here. And then I'm going to go to Dominic at TDS Woodcraft so I can get that T, put this back for a nice amateur restoration. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? So I'm being productive. I'm doing good things. I'm healing from the trauma of homelessness. And because, I swear, man, I hate to say this, man, but... This religious oppression in New York City is a very terrible thing by these people that's got that religion, that's got a frame of reference, and they're not doing it by American law. They're doing it according to their religion, their book. The peoples of the books. Beware the people of the books. Because they'll write a book on you and turn you into something else that you're not. You go from that to a piece of shit. And then they erase you from the book. I've got their number. I'm going to put it in my book to sell it. Telling of my experiences of religious oppression in New York City is bound to make a boatload of money because what I did was allowed everything that they did to me to occur, recorded it, made sure it wasn't all the public records, everything. So when I prov provide the evidence to support my claims that <laughs> the typical New York City government is living outside the Constitution of of the United States of America because it doesn't separate somebody's religion from the state. That's right. And I ain't taking that shit back. <laughs> so you can call me anti any goddamn thing you want. <laughs>